joined now by Jamie Boys from Catalyst Fund Managers in Cape Town talking about his global real estate fund. Jamie, thank you very much for joining us. Perhaps we can just set out at the top of the interview your investment philosophy when it comes to the real estate fund globally. Hi. Um, I think primarily what you're looking at is you, you know, real estate as an asset class is a quite defensive, um, it's got quite defensive nature in that it's, un you know, the, the cash flow is underpinned by long-term leases. Um, so, and together with that, you're looking at quality portfolios, um, stocks that are holding quality portfolios, either in industrial, retail, or office, um, and with the ability to grow that income over time. So it's, it's a bit of a hybrid between an equity and a bond. Uh, the yield that you buy it at is, is your bond-like characteristic, and the ability to grow those revenues are your equity-like um, characteristics. Jamie, just a question from my side. Uh, if you look at the, the property portfolio makeup in South Africa and what listed, uh, prop uh, listed uh, property stocks have done over the last sort of 18 months to two years, they have been, I think, if not the best performing, one of the best performing asset classes. Have you seen a similar trend? Uh, I see you have got some exposure here in the New Zealand and Australia space. Have you seen a similar trend uh, globally uh, in the East and obviously bringing it back, you know, further towards the Eurozone? Yeah, I think, I mean, looking over the last two years is probably not a great time to look over it because it came off radically sort of during the GFC up until the beginning of 2009 and then it's rebounded quite strongly. I think. Initially, it came off radically. Asset values took a huge, a huge knock. Um, you know, these companies went into the cycle quite highly geared. And when your asset values are taking a knock of 40 to 50 percent in some markets, suddenly, you know, you underwater, your properties are underwater. You're going into the cycle 50, 60 percent geared. Suddenly, you're underwater. You've got to raise new equity, and that had some permanent destruction. I mean, going forward, since since sort of March. Um, the global sector is up about 150 percent so there has been a great rebound but you must remember that it's come off it came off radically before that just taking a step back who are you catering for with this fund i think we, we, the, our, our investors are primarily south african but across the globe any anyone could be invested in um, global listed property um you're looking for someone who, uh, someone that's a it's quite a high um, yielding um, asset class, as, as I said, so someone who's looking for some cash flow with the ability to get some growth over the long term. Looking at a couple of the stocks that you've given us to, to chat about, and now obviously the South African audience won't be familiar with these stocks. Uh, if you were to choose, you've, you've given us five of them. Which would you say is yeah. the most interesting, Jamie, that you, you could talk us through this evening? Okay, I think, I mean, if you look at a counter like Simon Property Group. Um, it's the largest owner of uh, regional malls throughout the US. Um, it's got a great quality portfolio. Um, and I think, you know, even though trading times are difficult for certain retailers, I think what you're going to see is the dominant retail malls in certain in regions are going to do better than, say, your strip malls and uh, more B, B grade type uh, properties. I mean, if you look at their most recent results, um, their sales per square foot uh, was up to f up nine percent over the last um, quarter. Their second quarter results this year um, to five hundred thirteen dollars a square foot. So these malls are trading well, and if your malls are trading well, your tenants that are in your malls have the ability to pay more rent, and that's obviously a good thing for for property companies. Um, great management team, great assets, um, and a great strategy. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great blue chip um, holding in any global property portfolio. Uh, just again, a question from my side, Jamie. If you just look at the developed uh, markets, particularly the US and the Eurozone, you know, going into a fund like this, does it not concern you just looking, for example, at uh, what housing prices are done, which obviously are very two different asset classes as opposed to retail and uh, your, your pure individual. But does it not concern you that uh, you aren't going to see the, the capital gain, uh, you know, give you the returns that investors are looking for? I mean, this would obviously be more of a cash flow type fund. 
But, uh, you know, net asset values could still come down. There is talk of potentially more of a recessionary period that we go through. And uh, in terms of capital gain, I think investors might be a bit cautious. And, uh, you know, where do you see these uh, property prices going from here on out? Yeah, I think, I think you've got to differentiate between commercial property and residential property that's owned by individuals. I mean, that is obviously, especially in the U.S., and certain countries in Europe has taken a huge smack. What we're looking at here and what we're investing in here is not that. There is a certain residential, um, the index is probably about 10% residential, which is all in the US, and it's, it's um, high-rise apartments in high barrier to entry uh, markets. So Manhattan's, your Boston's, Washington DC, San Diego. And actually, those properties are trading very well. And the reason that is, is because a lot of individuals have decided that they don't need to be homeowners. They've seen what's happened to people um, who've lost a lot of money on, on houses, and they're becoming renters now, which is obviously good for, for your owners of apartments in those, in those high barrier to entry markets. So looking at the residential side from across the board, let's take America, the, the, the whole of America is very different to owning commercial property um, in those regions. I also think one thing is that very good quality property is, is going gonna, is gonna to outshine secondary property at the moment. You know, good quality property at the moment, banks are still willing to fund that type of property. Tenants really want to be in it, and investors are still willing to buy it. There's a property that, uh, that's on sale at the moment in Manhattan. We're talking sub four cap rates that the guys are bidding at. Simon Property Group just got some funding, $4 billion and 100 basis points over LIBOR. They've got access to capital, you know, the banks are willing to lend to guys with um, good quality portfolios. I think your secondary quality portfolios are really going to struggle. You're going to get tenants who don't want to be in them, no one's going to want to lend to them, and no one's going to buy them. So you've got to differentiate between the different types of properties. Jamie, can you quickly just throw forward to the performance of the fund? I, I see that you have been awarded some accolades in, in terms of performance. <coughs> performance going forward, I know, I know you can never judge performance going forward from your past performance, but your thoughts in the space? Yeah, <laughs> what you say is great. Um, I mean, we're obviously always looking for, for areas where we, where we can add out performance. Um, you know, we, we're investing globally, so your regional allocations, you know, we invest from the US to Western Europe and the UK and then developed Asia and Australia. Um, so where you make calls regionally can make a big difference. And I think at the moment you, 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 there's some great quality companies that are trading at huge discounts to NAV at the moment and discounted to where we see um, their intrinsic value. and. In times like these, you can get stocks like that really cheaply and, and hopefully going forward that, that will give us the ability to, to continue to outperform.